Okay, I feel like I'm gonna regret this one, so I brought some dolls for moral support, and I'm trying to get my cats to join me, but neither of them really want to right now, so that's life. Hi, and welcome if you're new to my channel. Uh, my name is Rabbit, and my pronouns are they, them. Welcome back. If you're back, I appreciate that you're here with me today. Um, I'm gonna just be doing my makeup today and talking about some stuff. If you read the title of the video, you probably know what I'm gonna be talking about today. And honestly, I'm super nervous because I don't like getting into comment wars with people. I try not to engage in it because I find it to be a waste of time. And we have so limited time on this earth that we really should, in my opinion, be doing as much as we can within our power to be like having fun and doing things that we like for ourselves. And comment wars make me feel bad. I'm like shaking right now a little bit because um, I don't know, I guess I'm just like sensitive. And that's okay, honestly, if um, you're planning to like comment and be like, oh, you're so sensitive, blah, 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 get over it, that's fine. I am at a point in my life that I don't consider sensitivity or softness to be a negative thing about me um, or in general. I think that we like to look upon it as weakness and I don't agree with that. That's not the point of this though today. Today I want to talk about um, gatekeeping in countercultures, like subcultures, um, specifically like alternative subcultures like goth, punk, that kind of thing. Um, and I'm talking about this because I have made a couple of videos on here kind of showing some fashion um, ideas or advice within these subcultures. And I'm uh, always getting these comments that are like, Oh, this I mean, this sounds weird because most of my comments are amazing and really, really sweet. But I want to talk about this because I like kind of remember the same thing happening to me when I was like 13 and 14 and being in the scene um, in spaces and stuff. So this is really rambly. I'm sorry. I'm going to talk about gatekeeping in alternative subcultures um, today and um, what, what I think of it and um, what I think is like kind of a valid gatekeeping that I think we should be doing and what I think that we need to freaking lay off the 13 year olds for a little bit, okay? Um, so I think that if you're, I don't know, I've seen a lot of videos on this topic and most of them seem to think that gatekeeping is like a good thing and like keeps the posers out and I like highly kind of disagree with that um, and I did see one video that I super agreed with and just like kind of gave me the, um, like I was like, you know what? F it, I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna do this video because I've like been experiencing this since I've been into alternative communities, which is like 10 years for me now, because I think I like first got into like emo and goth and punk and stuff when I was around 13 and I'm 23 right now. Sorry, I like wanted to do my makeup during this, but I had to refilm it like five times because I keep getting flustered and it's very, very upsetting. Let's get Toonie more in the frame. Um, but I did see a video that I really, really did like and really, really appreciated, and I'm gonna link that person's channel and their video on it because I was just like, yes, you are so right, and I agree with you 100%. So, basically, the straw that- okay, I've wanted to do this video for a long time talking about my opinions with, like, gatekeeping in the alternative goth, punk, etc. communities, um, but I haven't felt the confidence and, like, felt like people were gonna be mad at me, and I know they are, and that's fine, um, but- I forgot that I dyed my hair purple last night and I can't do blue eyebrows anymore, I have to do purple eyebrows, so my bad. Okay, this is like the most rambly video ever. So, the straw that broke my camel's back today um, was that someone commented on one of my like fashion videos because I do a lot of like fashion videos on here on YouTube and like sometimes I, and I'll like title them things like alternative or goth or punk because I think that some of the tips or hacks or outfits or whatever are applicable to those subcultures. And if you don't like them or don't want to wear them, you don't have to, and that's fine. But someone commented today and was like, this is false, like the goth and punk style doesn't exist and it's all about the music and blah, 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 blah. And I was like, <laughs> okay, like, I see where you're coming from, um, but like, if goth and punk style doesn't exist, then like, what do you call what like Susie Sue wore and like how she did her makeup and her hair? What do you call what Robert Smith did with his makeup and hair. Like, and the people that are inspired by that and also like tease their hair and like do their makeup really dark and like wear dark clothes and like spooky aesthetics. Like, what do you, what do you call that then if it's not goth or punk? Because I think that like, 
Gotham punk music is amazing and I love it and I appreciate it. But I think the people have this weird thing on the internet specifically um, that tends to be geared towards women and femme people, honestly. And I know people are gonna be like, eh, you're just whining about the patriarchy. But honestly, I hardly see on alternative dudes um, TikToks or YouTubes or whatever, people being like, you're not a real punk or you're not a real goth or whatever. It's like almost always on young women's stuff. And I think that a big part of it is also the whole e-girl, e-boy, e-kid, e-they thing. I think that a lot of people that grew up with like goth and punk subcultures like really look down on those people, which I think is really rude. Basically, okay, I think that like um, styles can influence each other and like evolve over time and I honestly think that that's a good thing. I think that like trad goth is an amazing style and I love people that do trad goth looks and like I was trying to do it for a while too and it was really fun um, and I like love people that do that. But I also think that cyber goth is a really cool style and I think that romantic goth is a really cool style and I think that emos have a cool style and I think that e-girls have a cool style and e-boys and like whatever. Um, and I think that like we have this weird thing within these subcultures that we like have this infighting of like one is better than the other like you're not a real this you're a that in like this derogatory way where I think that like as a community of people that for the most part and this is something that um, the person whose video I mentioned um, talked about and I think that they're really right um, that since a lot of us experienced like being othered and stuff as a kid and like feeling different and stuff. Um, this subculture and this music and this fashion style was a way to like express ourselves and express that difference and also find other people that felt the same way. Um, and I like firmly believe that because I think that like when I go out and I wear like my band, my battle jacket with all my band patches and stuff, I get comments from people that also like those bands and we can talk and we can be friends. And I fundamentally think that that's like a good thing. Uh, but what I was saying is that like styles can influence each other and like though trad goth and romantic goth and cyber goth and emo are all different things, um, they're all still cool. And, but like if we, like the minute cyber goth started being a thing, we're like, that's not really goth. You can't do that. Then we wouldn't have like the amazing thing that that is. And then it can even evolve further into being st things like steampunk where like, I love steampunk fashion. I don't really do it myself, but I love it so much and I admire it. And like when I can incorporate elements of it into my outfit, I love to do that. But like this gatekeepy thing of like, you can't do this unless you do it 100% of the time. And if you don't listen to the music, you're a complete poser is like complete BS in my opinion, because it honestly makes people not want to listen to the music and not want to be in the subculture because people just jump down their throats if they don't know everything about it. And honestly, honestly, like when you were first a baby goth and getting into the subculture, were you out of the womb wearing combat bat, combat bats, combat boots and your hair in a bat's nest and listening to The Cure and freaking with your giant alien sex fiend t-shirt on? No, probably not. You know what I mean? Like, it takes time to develop your knowledge of the music and your knowledge of the fashion. And if you don't want to, that's valid too. I personally really like goth music and punk music and specifically folk punk. I like have a video recently where I talk about all the folk punk stuff and people might be like, oh, well, that's not really punk. I don't care. I like it. And honestly, when people like criticize others for like doing harmless things like liking the music they like or dressing the way they like, it honestly just gives me the vibe of like some person sitting on their lawn with like a I hate fun sign. And it's just like really silly. So honestly, if you're going to leave like a very long um, angry comment about like how I'm killing the subculture and I should be ashamed of myself, do it. But I'm not going to reply. And life's like honestly so short. Like why would you spend it making it more miserable for yourself when you can just have fun and dress the way you want and listen to the bands you want and leave people alone? Here's the thing that I do want to talk about. And this is going to get heavy. So um, trigger warning um, for essay and racism and um, Nazis basically. So okay. So here's the thing about gatekeeping that I think is actually valid. I think that we as like goths and punks and alternative people should make the communities hostile to people that are actively harmful to the communities because I think that there is sometimes and I'm not saying this about everybody but I think that there has been a pattern that we can see with social media specifically and like alternative people um, or like 
basically predators hiding in our scenes and um, even in my local scene I, I remember growing up knowing about so many people that it was just like just stay away from that dude and stay away from that dude and we like need to actively work to make our scenes hostile to racist people to homophobic people to transphobic people in my opinion because those are things that like punk <clears throat> stands for if you do want to talk about the politics what I was saying about um, keeping the scene hostile to abusers and like people that actually harm people in our scene is that like think about for instance right now of the really big case with Marilyn Manson that is a person that yes I remember when I was 13 and first getting into goth music I was like no he's a poser like he's not a real goth because he does too much like pop music and his whatever that doesn't matter what my personal thoughts were about it at the time I don't stand by that anymore I just stand by the fact that he's a piece of shit because he abused Evan Rachel Woods and used our scene, um, like the alternative scene, as a way to normalize and kind of make shock value of behavior that was honestly really big red flags and everyone just like took as like, oh, it's just like him being edgy or whatever, when it was actively him harming someone, like a real person that he was supposed to be in a relationship with. Or like, I don't know the whole story behind like Destre Smith or like the blood on the dance floor guys, but like there's people that hide in our scene and like use the edgy aesthetics and stuff to mask abusive and harmful behavior. And that's the people that we should actually try to gatekeep and make the scene hostile towards. Same with Nazi punks. Like there is such a history of Nazis using punk imagery and going to punk shows and like being lumped into the category punk category and we need to actively work to keep them out and show them that they're not fucking safe here and they're not fucking wanted here and that they need to get the fuck out of our scene right that's someone that you can actually should in my opinion if you have so much energy to put towards like getting people out of our scene that don't belong there fucking gatekeep some nazi punks out of here like make yourself useful you know what i mean and I remember when I was growing up, um, like personally, I had a lot of experience with um, people that were toxic and also alternative and used a lot of the fact that they were just edgy or like claimed to just be edgy to hide a lot or not to hide, but to justify a lot of abusive and toxic behavior. So that is the kind of thing that in my opinion, we need to be actively making our scene hostile towards. And also the argument that like, oh, well, if you're a Nazi punk, then you're not a real punk. I get it. But that's like the no true Scotsman fallacy or whatever. Like just by saying it, you're not actually kicking them out of the scene. You need to actively like, kick them out of the scene. You know what I mean? Like, m make it known that they're not welcome here. Um, but like, when you just turn all that anger on like, these TikTok users that for the most part, I, re I notice are like, younger femme looking people, it just feels like an excuse for your sexism, honestly. And it just feels like you wanna yell at someone who like, you don't know and you don't like get like you don't really like you're using this idea of what they represent in your head to justify being an absolute dick to them and um i don't think that's cool when it's like literally someone who's not harming anything anyone because like when we just criticize like go on like 13 year old girls tiktok page who's like wearing black lipstick and calling herself goth and being like you're not really goth because you don't really listen to what i have prescribed as the goth bands that you have to listen to then like what are you doing other than like making some random kid you don't know feel bad about themselves like it really makes no sense to me why like i it must be just like that people aren't happy with themselves and think that like taking it out on others is gonna make them feel better and I'm sorry if that's what you're going through, but like seek help. Don't like go freaking police what 13 year olds are wearing. Because here's the other thing that I hear from these um, communities that people are like, well, people are just hopping on the trend. Okay, so what? Who are they hurting? Personally, I found that when gothy things were in fashion, I was much more able to find goth clothes that I liked in like mainstream stores. I don't really shop at mainstream stores anymore. I try to get all my clothes from the thrift store uh, because at least where I live in Canada, we have so many clothes coming into the thrift store consistently that we are co that we have to like dump things in the landfill. So people that are gonna like come at me and be like, you shouldn't thrift if you like don't absolutely need to. Not here, dude. Like, I don't know what to tell you, but 
when uh, goth fashion is more mainstream, like it's easier to find affordable, cool clothes that you like, in my experience. Um, like, the other thing that I always see is people being like, oh, well, the people that are goth now are the same people that bullied me in high school for being goth or whatever. And I have to break it to you, no, they're not. Half the time, this is like people my age, like 23, 25, like whatever, like older alternative people criticizing like 15 year olds on TikTok. And I don't know how to tell you that like, they're not the same people that were criticizing you. like they were eight when you were in high school. So they weren't those people and you're like doing some weird projection. When I, okay, personally, when I got into like the goth subculture in the first place, I would, I didn't get into it because I was, I like heard the cure and was like, oh my God, this is the most amazing thing. I, I like didn't have that point of access into it. The point of access that I had into it was going online and like seeing, or no, okay. The first thing was like, I liked Coraline and Neil Gaiman and Tim Burton and all that kind of spooky stuff. And then I like was looking for that online. And then I like saw some people that were like lots of like spooky outfits. And then I saw more people that were like goth and like romantic goth and trad goth. And that's the thing that got me into the scene. And I was so lucky when I was um, younger because there was this got there was this blog that honestly, you guys, I was searching for for so long since um, I was like, because I, I used to read it like every night when I was like 13 it was called the ultimate goth guide and it was by this girl named Amy and I'd been searching for it for so long again because I'd lost track of it and she had just like all these links um like there was this one page that was just like all um goth bands and it was alphabetized and that's how I found some of my favorite bands um and like some of the weirder bands that I don't think I would have been able to find in any other way like Coco Rosie and um Cinema Strange like I wouldn't have been able to find those bands I don't think um if it weren't for her and her blog and and, and she's also the one that introduced me to like all the like the really classic Bauhaus and The Cure and like Susie and the Banshees and stuff so like her blog was like so freaking amazing and then I so I would read it like consistently like every night when I was 13 and then I like lost track of it for a while and I'd been searching for it ever since but I couldn't find what the blog was called and and recently I like saw a picture of her online and I like did like kind of a reverse google image search and found that the blog's been deactivated and it's like the saddest thing on the planet because that blog is so nostalgic for me and like I found a page of it on web archive but like it's it's not the whole thing and like I miss her so much and I wish she would come back but regardless um, so when I was like younger I had um, first the fashion that like made me interested in it and through that I found Amy's blog and through that I found the music and then through that I found punk music and through that I found punk like fashion and like through that I also learned about like steampunk and Lolita and like all these other like really beautiful styles that I think are wonderful and like some of them I don't think I'll ever really like Lolita I just don't have um the money I feel like to um do that kind of aesthetic justice in what I feel like but um for instance I love pastel goth and that feels like it has a inspiration drawn perhaps from goth and from Lolita and from a bunch of other things and like the idea that it's like oh well because I do get comments on my pastel goth video that are like no goth would ever wear this it's like yeah I know it's a pastel goth video and like Jesus like I don't I don't get why people are so aggressive I mean I do get why people are so aggressive because I used to be that way about this subculture I used to be super judgmental and be like oh if people listen to Panic at the Disco and if they listen to My Chemical Romance and if they listen to blah 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 I'm gonna stop naming bands because the more I do it the more I'm gonna like piss off people but like I used to think that like if you listen to those bands um that you weren't really alternative or goth and like that's so dumb like that's literally so lame if you're like going around to people's comment sections and their videos and being like you're not a real goth because you don't do this like I don't know get a freaking hobby like I don't <laughs> anyway because also through like goth and punk subcultures is the way that I or is one of the ways that I really was introduced to like more DIY things and um I'm able sometimes to translate some of my like love for goth fashion and stuff into dolls and and that's like a cool thing so like I don't like I get being protective of your subculture but who are you protecting it from like freaking 13 year olds that god forbid might find something <clears throat> that they enjoy in your subculture and then like 
I don't know because a lot of the time it doesn't feel like the comments don't come from a place where they feel like they're trying to educate anyone it just feels like a place where they're trying to feel like they're on their high horse about how much better their music taste is than what they perceive your music taste to be <laughs> or whatever <clears throat> Music is a big part of these subcultures, but if you don't like punk music, you're still allowed to wear patches and plaid and things that you like from the punk fashion aesthetic. Like, I'm gonna be controversial in saying that, like, I don't care if you listen just to Taylor Swift and Katy Perry and you dress in all black and, like, do super romantic goth. Like, you are just as valid and, like, not hurting anyone or doing anything wrong. Like, you're literally, like, as long as you're enjoying your life, I don't get what people's hang-up is. It feels like a victim complex, it feels like a persecution complex, and I know that's gonna like get people mad. I don't know, maybe it is just like hurt people feeling very hurt and lashing out at people that they don't know and trying to make them feel bad about themselves so they can feel better. I know that's like the most cliche thing ever. Wow, this is like the, like, <laughs> I got this eyeshadow in like 2018 and it's really not holding up very great. If you have good black eyeshadow recommendations, please. Hit me up in the comments. <sighs> this video has been all over the place. Like, personally, the way I feel about it is I think that the politics and the music and these things are important and they're a really vital part of our subculture. But if we act like snobs about it and just like tell people like, you don't know enough about it, so you're not a real blah blah blah, instead of like just giving them either A, the benefit of the doubt, or B, if you find that they said something ignorant, just being either educating them or like, and when I say something ignorant, I mean something like actively harmful. Like I don't find someone showing an alt clothing haul that has like jeans, like blue jeans in it harmful. Like it, what are they gonna do? Like take your goth resources, like go to your goth library and take your goth music. Like, and if that's the case, then don't you want them to be doing that? Because like, for me, these subcultures are something that I love. And I think people, who also are attracted to them should feel free to experiment and feel welcome in them. Like, geez. Sorry if this is coming off as really heated, but I just, like, I'm really sick of constantly being told and, like, seeing other people being told that, like, they're hurting the subculture in some way. Because I think that oftentimes, if people are attracted to the alternative aesthetic, there's a probably a reason and maybe they'll like something they'll find something that they like about it and even if they don't stay in that aesthetic forever then maybe they'll like freaking keep wearing doc martens or keep doing their eye makeup in a certain way or whatever and like that's cool like you're allowed to move through life and like experience different subcultures and find like what feels right for you and like if you do really feel like so strongly that someone isn't appreciating the music or doesn't know what they're talking about them, like, make them a playlist. Like, I don't know, like, there's no need to go on a tirade about how they're not welcome here and they're destroying the community. I personally think that the goth subculture, and by that I mean the music, the movies, the makeup styles, the clothing styles, the people that I've met through being interested in the subculture is something that I feel really, really lucky to have found. And if I have found so much comfort in it, I would hope that other people could also find comfort in it and that's why I make my YouTube and stuff and yeah there's like gonna be people that don't like it but you don't have to like every single thing that you see like uh like, like do you like every single outfit that you've ever seen in your life like no obviously not people have different tastes and that's okay but when you see an outfit that you don't like do you like go up and personally like berate the person and tell them that they look like trash like I hope not because that's like a lot of negativity that you're putting out there for no real reason and I don't know why in a life that's so short we would be trying to prolong that if we don't absolutely have to I'm getting fed up I'm sorry, you guys. But I think that, like, people that like dark eye makeup or dark whatever, like, give them a chance. They might find the aesthetic and find that they love it. Because, like, when you started in the aesthetic, did you know every single thing about it? Did you have an insight? 
Like when you first got interested in the fashion or the music or whatever that you're into, did you have an encyclopedic um, knowledge of every single band that was in that genre and also the full wardrobe and makeup skills that were perfect to your- like obviously not. Like when I was first like 14 and a goth, I looked like a dork, like <laughs> I'll show a picture but like yeah I don't know, I was just like trying the best with what I had because when you're young and you like are just first learning about these music styles and like getting interested in self-expression and stuff, you don't have all the tools and the resources, the money and whatever to wear what you want. Oh my god, the fucking sirens. Okay, the, when you're young and first get- Okay, when you're first getting interested in these subcultures and the music and the fashion and whatever whatever, you probably don't have an encyclopedic knowledge of like every single band that ever had this type of genre or every single fashion icon or every single reference or like, you know, you, you, it takes a while to like get to know everything and instead of just like yelling at people for not knowing everything, like you could either A, like I, educate them if you care so much like make a make a blog yourself make a youtube video where you talk about your favorite goth music and goth movies because like by just telling people you're not goth like do you want the subculture to die because that's what we're doing when we like don't like let anyone experiment or like dip their toe in without biting their heads off because they don't know enough about it yet um i don't know i think that there's absolutely valid people to gatekeep out of the subculture which is people that are harmful but in terms of like if some 13 year old girl goes on freaking tiktok and puts on some black lipstick and wants to call herself goth also look at this that's so cool and wants to call herself goth let her do it like who is she hurting if it ca if you care so much sorry also look at this if you care that much then just like click off of her like I don't know it doesn't like you don't have to go like be a dick about it um editing me here um also I think that with the gatekeeping one thing that I wanted to mention is that it's not necessarily like this like when I say it's a sexist problem it's not just men that are doing it I think that a lot of it also comes from internalized misogyny internalized misogyny and I can speak from like personal experience that like when I was growing up I had a ton of internalized misogyny and a lot of that manifested in like this kind of slut shaming towards like other women that were like alternative or goth and like did it in a way that like showed more skin than me or whatever and now I realize that that was just like deep deep insecurity and like trauma that was like coming out in this really gross way um but like like I think that like we don't I've never seen someone go up to a metalhead boy and accuse him of like not really liking metal um, or like thinking that like fake metalhead boys are a thing uh, but I think that there's like oftentimes with women specifically it's like paired with this slut shaming language um, of like you know you're just being like an e-girl slut for attention kind of thing which I think is like very misogynistic and um yeah I think part of it comes from other men of course but also part of it comes from misogyny and it's like not necessarily um a gendered thing like I'm non-binary but like I grew up with a lot of internalized misogyny and like I'm really grateful to have been able to unlearn that now and like I'm constantly working on it every day because these things are so ingrained in our culture but um yeah I think it's important to recognize that it's not just um and then it's also can, yeah okay like people sometimes take time to build up to a certain aesthetic and there's no shame in that like I remember um, when I was first doing the goth thing when I was like 13 or whatever I didn't feel like I could go from zero to wearing black lipstick in one day and obviously that's not what happened like it started with like some darker eye makeup and then it turned into a little bit of all white foundation including all over my lips and dark eye makeup and oh my god no blush and just like a ton of contour and it just looked like I had like dirt on both sides of my face it was a it was a super good look I also just like teased my hair in a giant rat nest and I had like straight across bangs so yeah Emily the Strange was like my hero my idol my everything but I think that like subcultures are a beautiful thing and we should be open to sharing them with people that are interested because that's how they grow and if you like it 
do you want to be like the last goth on earth? Like that's what it feels like with some people that they feel like they are the only true goth out there and everyone else is just a poser and they're they're the real ones that really get the music and the whatever and it's just like not true. Like it's a popular subculture for a reason because a lot of people relate and a lot of people like it. And I'm sorry if that makes you feel like less of an outcast. I think that's maybe what it comes down to is that people want to be like I don't know the like weirdo one but I love having my little community of weirdos I would love more people to be weirdos because the more weirdos there are the more easy it is to find weirdo bands and a weirdo hair dye and weirdo clothes more easily and here's the thing is that there are I think valid things to criticize within like mainstream um mainstreaming of goth culture where it comes to over consumerism and like capitalism and sweatshops and slave labor and the fact that like so many of our clothes are just like pumped out uh, by people that are vastly underpaid and shipped over here and then um, whatever just doesn't sell just goes into the landfill um, I think that there are things to criticize about overconsumption in goth culture but that's never what you see criticized what you see criticized is this 15 year old girl is wearing a Susie and the Banshees t-shirt and I bet she doesn't even listen to them. I'm like, oh my god, why do you care? Like, it's it's a kid. Like, I, I don't know. People are definitely, I feel like, gonna disagree with me on this video and um, that's fine. I also, okay, here's another thing that I wanted to mention is that like people talk about like e-girl and stuff and like sometimes I get called like an e-girl on e day. I like would really prefer if people don't use the term girl with me. Um, just if you can, <laughs> I really appreciate that. Um, but like, I don't personally identify as that, but like, it's fine if people see my, because that's not what I grew up with, but it's like fine if people see that as my aesthetic. It's the same thing as I feel with like the term bisexual, like I'm bisexual. I had a conversation with one of my really good friends in university and they were telling me, you know, you shouldn't consider yourself bisexual because uh, like you should consider yourself bi pansexual because um, bi means two and it's like inherently exclusionary and stuff. And I was like, no, um, like historically bi has, o bi has always included non-binary and trans people and everyone in between and like I grew up with the label by it's the label that I feel is comforting to me it's the label that I like and so it's the one that I'm gonna stick with I like the flag colors I I like the community I, I like pan by feels like me and if pan feels like you that's totally cool too like no hate it's pride month obviously we love our by pan everyone um, in the rainbow but like and it's similar with like I I sometimes get so anxious when I like put out my videos because I want to label them like goth uh, punk alt ideas of like this or that and I'm so scared that people will like comment and be like oh this isn't really punk or goth or alt because they do and the thing that I want to say to that is that like there's some overlap within these styles and I feel like as a person who has dabbled in a lot of them and now just kind of dresses in a way that, I don't know, I, I like to call it clutter punk, um, like just like a lot of weird different layers on stuff, oh my god I hate all the engines outside, uh, but like with punky aesthetics and, and whatever, um, but, but like with the really strict labels, I think it's, with the really strict labels, I think it's totally fine if you want to consider yourself, I'm cyberpunk with steampunk elements on this day and I only listen to this kind of music and blah blah blah. Like, that's fine if that's what you want, you want to do for yourself, but just like, let other people do what they want too. Like, I always just assume if someone's doing like some fashion or some music thing that I don't like or I don't get, I'm like, oh okay, well they probably like it and they probably are enjoying themselves and it's not any of my business, so I move on my day. Yes, I agree, Car. Um, so, I don't know. Maybe I'm like the sensitive baby, and I think that that is true. I'm like very, I am a very sensitive person, and I don't think there's anything wrong with that. Um, but when I do get comments that are like just unnecessarily cruel, um, it, 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 it's confusing, and I feel like it, it doesn't help our subculture. Um, it doesn't help the reputation of our subculture because I also get comments that are like, oh wow, like you're an alternative person, you're actually nice, and I'm like, yeah. I'm sad that that's, like, surprising, if that's how you feel. Um, 
but um, I don't think it helps our subculture, our community to um, be hostile to people that are new to it, to be hostile to people who are trying it out or dipping their toe in and seeing if they like it. I, I think that like, all in all, like, I would like more people in our community. I don't think it's bad that like, people think it's like trendy to like wear dark clothes. Um, like I've been doing that since I was 13 and when I was 13 I couldn't find any clothes that I liked anywhere um, because it wasn't like mainstream or whatever and like I would just have to get my clothes that I really really liked at Halloween <laughs> like that's when I would get like clothes that I actually liked um, but I don't know I think that there's just like so many bigger things to worry about within our subculture um, like the racism and the homophobia that like just and the abuse that just gets like shielded by like edginess or this like kind of idea of like you know like I'm tough and punk so like it's fine where where I think fundamentally a big component of punk is like uplifting people that are disenfranchised and like working class solidarity and like us helping each other out and stuff so things that I've rambled for super super long yeah, the end of the story is dress how you want. You're not hurting anyone by dressing or listening to music unless you're like actively like wearing Nazi imagery or like appropriating cultures or whatever. Wear what you want, listen to what you want, and like let other people do the same unless they're actively harming people. That's always like what I try to live by is like do whatever you want as long as you're not harm hurting anyone, including yourself. Wow. I've always admired punk for its compassion and its politics. And like, I know people are gonna tell me that like, punk isn't about compassion, punk is about like pissing off the man and blah, 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 blah. But there has to be compassion at the root of your activism. If your activism is just about burning cars and Molotov cocktails, your activism isn't about anything. Your activism has to be about people and that's like what needs to be at the core of it. Um, and like, I just don't think that getting mad at like young women online is a good use of anyone's time. So that's what I have to say. Also, I know I've said young women a lot of time. I'm not a young woman, but a lot of people misgender me in the comment section, even though I say my pronouns are they, them at the beginning of the, uh, the thing. So I don't know what that's about. <laughs> it's like people actively being transphobic. So uh, that's what it feels like anyway, but I'm sorry. Maybe I shouldn't have filmed today because I just like, I don't know, I woke up with that comment that was like, God, there's in a real style and it just set me off. So I apologize. Uh, I hope y'all are having a really, really good day, and I'm sorry if I shattered the illusion of being a nice person, because I do get a lot of comments that say that I'm, like, nice or whatever, but, like, gosh, there's some, there's some stuff I had to get off my chest, and I don't know if I'm gonna upload this. I'm, like, really nervous, but, yeah. That's what I got. I hope y'all have a good one. Bye. <laughs> Also, okay, while I'm here, I think there are some problematic things that are in the goth subculture that don't get talked about. Like, the whole obsession with the pale skin thing. Um, like, personally, this doesn't affect me that much because I'm a white person, um, but, like, I'm Italian, so I, like, naturally grew up with a tan, um, so, like, I would look up uh, ways to lighten my skin with like lemon juice and these kinds of things and like natural bleaching and I didn't realize that at the time, but that is like a super toxic ideal to be spreading within a community and that just like makes it so hostile in my opinion to people of color and I think that that's like like when we look at our scene like I, I think that it's overwhelmingly white at least in my area and when we see that I think we need to like ask ourselves why is that and who are we making our scene safe for and who are we making our scene unsafe for because like if you think about the fact that Nazi punks exist like I can imagine why some people of color might feel unsafe in the punk scene so um <sighs> that's who we really uh, that's like really in my opinion what we should be worried about I know like people are gonna call me a so social justice warrior on this video and I do not care um, about that but yeah um, please don't get mad at me unless you're mad about me being a poser then get as mad as you want I don't care have a great rest of your day you guys I hope you have a good one bye